in the safa wal marwa ta min shair Allah. Now you know because with Ibrahim's mention in the 15th section, there was the mention of the building of the house of Allah subhanahu wa taala baytullah. Then there was the mention of tawaf and ruku and sujood and etikaf and maqab Ibrahim. So in the holy places there, these two were remaining. So a mention has been made of these two also. In the safa wal marwa ta min shair Allah. Verily, surely the mounts of Safa and Marwa are also from the emblems of Allah, symbols of Allah, Shair, emblems, symbols, signs, signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. For man had jal baita bi tamara fala junaha alehi idabwa fabihima. So whosoever makes Hajj or Umrah of the bait of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, there will be no sin on him if he also circumambulates. Both of them, he is doing tawaf, but you know this is not tawaf. This is sahi. Going from Safa to Marwa, one. Returning from Marwa to Safa, two. So all seven. So actually, it's walking, and in in a part of it, it's running, but it is not circle ambulation. Sahi is this called? But here, you know, Quran has used the same word tawaf because you are going. From this to that, and returning back to the original Mount of Safa, so it can be said to be Safa Dawaf, but actually this is Sai, and in the Manasik Hajj, you know, it's called Sai. Waman tatawa khairan fa inna Allah shaatun alim, or whosoever does any good deed voluntarily, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is always appreciative of anybody's good deed, and He is definitely knowing, He knows every good deed of every person. Now there is a reference again to the Jews, and this is going to be the last place in this surah where a reference has been made to the Jews, because they concealed all the facts about the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, in the last part of the 16th section, with which the first part of the Quran ended, we had the ayah, but because we were ending that that session, so we couldn't pay attention, full attention, due attention to that ayah. وَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَتَمَ شَهَادَةً إِنَّهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Who is more cruel, more unjust than that person who conceals and hides a testimony from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is with him. You are having a testimony from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are hiding it. You are keeping it back. You are concealing it. So this is the biggest injustice. This is the biggest act, you know, of evil that a man can be expected to commit. Man aslam umim man katama shahada tan in dahu min Allah. Now actually we may say that these three ayat or four ayat they are in they are giving the details of the same ayah. Inna lazina yaktumuna ma anzalna min al bayyanat wal huda. Definitely, surely those who conceal and hide what we have sent down min al bayyanat clear signs and clear teachings wal huda and guidance. Min baad ma bayyan na holi na sifil kitab. After we made them very clear in our book for the people, ulai ka yala anhum Allah wa yala anhum Allah inun. They are the people on whom Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself curses, and all the cursers, all those who curse, they also curse them. Ulai ka yala anhum Allah wa yala anhum Allah wa yala anhum Allah inun. Those who have this that testimony, that knowledge. That guidance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent down in His book, but people who have that book, they conceal that testimony. Actually, they are getting the curse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and curse of all the cursers. Illa Lazina Tabu. There is an exception, except those who repent, waslahu, and relent towards them, waslahu wa bayyanu. Those who who make tawbah. Who return to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Who repent? Waslahu, and then they rectify their attitude. Wa bayyanu, and then they explain and make clear whatever the words they are in the book. Ulai katu bo alehim. They are the people on whom I will relent towards them. Wa anat tawabu rahim, and I am the one who relents towards people who make tawba and who are repenting in the real sense. In the ladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kufaru. On the contrary, those who who committed kufr, 
who disbelieved, who belied the truth, wa matu wa hum kuffar, and died in the same condition, died in kufr, died as kafirs. Ulai ka alehim lana tulai wal malai ka te wal nasi al maein. They are the people on whom there is the curse of Allah and all the angels and all the people. They are have they are having for them the all the curses from Allah as well as the angels as well as the all the men. Waila khalidin afiha. They will remain in that, dwell in that curse forever. La yuqafaf wa anhum al azab. Neither the punishment or chastisement will be reduced for them, diminished for them. Waila hum yun zarur. Nor they will be given any respite. Waila hu kum ila hu wahid. Your Lord, your God. Is one God, La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Him, Ar Rahman, Hu Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, and He is all compassionate, all merciful, most beneficent. Inna fi khalqi sababati wal lardi wa khilaf al layl wal nahar wal fulk alati tajni fi al bahr bi ma yanfaul nas. Now this is a very important ayah of the Quran, and this actually I have given it a name, Ayatul Ayat. Because this one ayah contains reference to so many physical phenomena, these physical phenomena which Quran declares as signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, everything is a sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. These skies, these heavens, this moon, this this sun, the alternation of the day and night, creation of heavens and earth, and this rain, all that the greenery, this, this earth you know gets after the rain, and so on. Everything you know is a sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, sign of His wisdom, sign of His authority, sign of His power. So actually, all these things are signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we find in various Bakki surahs, each one of these signs is discussed separately in ayat. But here, in one ayat, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has gathered so many physical phenomena as His signs. So it is Ayatul Ayat, the one ayat. Which has comprised so many ayat and signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In the fiqh is samawat wal nard. Surely in the creation of heavens and the earth, waqtilaf il layl wal nahar, and the difference or alternation of the night and the day, wal fulkil lati tajri fil bahri bima yanfau nas, and in the ships that float. In the in the rivers and the sea, with the material which is beneficial, bimayan found nas, which is beneficial for people. Wa maandar Allahu min al-samaa bi maayn, and in the water that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has sent down from the sky, fahiya bihilar ta baada mautiha, and revived the earth after it had died. It was dead because when the, there is no greenery on the earth, it is like a dead earth. There is nothing, no signs of life. But when there is rain, there are all signs of life. You know, there is greenery, and you know the insects also appear, birds also come. Life, you know, in all the form now becomes very evident and apparent. To fahiya bihil arta baada mautiha, and he made you know the earth again living after it had been dead. Wa bas safiha min kulle daab batin, and he has spread in it. All the moving creatures, all the animals, all the things that he has created, was sahab in musaq wa tasrif in riyah, and in the changing of the winds, direction of the change, wind is changing from this direction to that direction, was sahab in musaq, and this cloud, which is you know subservient, and this is between bala samay wa lard, this is floating between the earth and the sky, la ya tille qami ya kilun. In each one of them, there are signs for people who have understanding, who can infer from these, who can understand them. Every sign, you know, is a clear proof of Allah's existence, of Allah being Almighty, of Allah being the All-Knowing. All the attributes, great attributes, the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they are manifest in these physical phenomena that every man can see with his own eyes.